reading debate. Senator Lyons. Thank you, Mr Acting Deputy President. And I uh, rise today to speak about why Labor is opposed to this cash at debit card uh, legislation that uh, we're currently debating. And I do so from a position of uh, listening to some of the speeches from government senators, and I acknowledge uh, their good intent in wanting to find um, a solution to what are indeed uh, complex problems that exist in uh, many parts of Australia. Uh, I think where that logic fails is to think that the solution is in a single uh, cashless, cashless debit card, but I do acknowledge the, the, um, the heartfelt contributions of, of many government senators uh, to the debate so far. I participated in the cashless debit card inquiry. I was particularly keen to participate um, in the Kalgoorlie hearings because for quite some time, uh, like you, uh, Mr Acting Deputy President, I've been concerned about what's been happening in Kalgoorlie. And I note that uh, last year you and I held a public meeting in Kalgoorlie and uh, many people came along to that meeting and you and I heard some shocking reports and particularly uh, the level of racism in that town, which is evident and was certainly reported to us at that open public uh, forum that we held. Um, and I do just want to start with that. Um, and of course, it isn't this card. The intention is not just for it to cover Kalgoorlie, but to cover the Greater Goldfields area. And we saw last year the shocking death of young Elijah, uh, a young. Um, first Australian boy uh, who was uh, run down by a car and the tragedy, the absolute tragedy that's created um, and on the face of it the very poor sentencing that the perpetrator of that um, crime received and uh, now there's um, further concern in the town because uh, that person will be out on bail um, fairly soon. So that created um, a lot of protest in the town, and there is definitely, in Kalgoorlie particularly, um, a real pervasive element of racism. And we saw on Australia Day the emergence of um, the Nazi flag uh, being carried around at parties, and there's, um, we heard at the inquiry that there are Facebook pages uh, that are dedicated to people who like to make um, derogatory remarks directed at First Australians. And again, you and I, when we held that open forum, we heard about uh, those Facebook pages which circulate in Kalgoorlie. So I would be um, saying right here and right now that there are much greater problems in the Goldfields region, particularly in Kalgoorlie. Uh, there are solutions to those problems, and they require governments, both state and federal and local government, to sit down with First Australians and to listen to the sorts of responses that they want to put in place. Certainly, um, Mr Trevor Donaldson uh, has been a high-profile advocate, First Nations advocate in the Goldfields area. He's part of the uh, Goldfields Land and Sea Council. He says what they need there is something for youth to do. And we know that in country towns um, there's usually a swimming pool, but there's often not much else. And they were seeking the establishment of a youth centre, uh, which they called upon the federal minister to give them the funds for. Um, and they've been calling for that for quite some time, and it's fallen on deaf ears, although I think there has been some movement on that uh, recently. But there's a solution where Mr Donaldson is saying, let's, let's divert these kids. We certainly heard from a young First Nations woman who works with the chamber uh, in Kalgoorlie that she finds it very hard to get young people, First Nations people, the opportunity to work in Kalgoorlie because of the racism. And she gave that in evidence to, uh, to the committee when we were— uh, we've had two inquiries up there recently that are relevant, both into the CDP and the, C the cashless debit card. And, and certainly she told us that the issue of racism often prevents her being able to place um, young people, particularly young people, uh, First Nations people, into employment. So much greater issues there than um, the cash debit card. Uh, 
um, that, that, that the cash just debit card is not going to respond to. And uh, ironic, as I speak, we have the uh, close the gap report being delivered by our prime minister. Um, and uh, whilst I haven't had a good opportunity to hear <coughs> everything the prime minister has said about that report, one of the things he has said is he wants um, first Australians to be able to participate equal. That there needs to be equal participation. Well. Imposing the cashless debit card in communities where um, the population is predominantly first Australians is anything but anything but equal participation. So I would certainly call the Prime Minister on that. Um, and Senator Patrick Dodson has said today on radio that the um, that the close the gap report or the results are not a game between uh, the Liberal and the Labor parties, and that's true, they are not a game. It is about, as, Patrick, as Senator Patrick Dodson says, the future of First Nations people in Australia, and it is about their quality of life. And I was very pleased last week to attend um, the 10-year review of the Closing the Gap strategy um, and its recommendations. Uh, and that uh, certainly June Oscar gave a really powerful speech about what needs to be done. And um, certainly what that report says, and I, I do want to quote from the, the review um, that says the close the gap approach and the close the gap statement on intent is founded on an understanding that population health outcomes are fundamentally the result of underlying structural factors such as social determinants, institutional racism, the quality of housing and access to appropriate primary health care. If governments want to improve and sustain the health of any population over time, these elements must be addressed. And again, when we are hearing from amazing women like uh, June Oscar about the fundamentals of what needs to be done to address uh, the gap, why then is the government so intent upon pursuing a card which will further disadvantage people, that further discriminates, that will not go to those issues that June Oscar and others say are needed to improve the well-being of uh, First Nations Australians and indeed other Australians who live uh, below the poverty line and who are simply not able to make ends meet. Uh, the, the cash de debit card is not the response. And I know as I speak there are some uh, people from Kalgoorlie in the building uh, lobbying the crossbenchers about the need to support the cash debit card. But there is another story and it is time that we stood back and that we listened and acted upon what First Nations and others uh, in this country believe is the way forward. And we have evidence from Kununurra and indeed Sejuna to say that it doesn't work. Now, it may work for some people. And there's no question that in Kalgoorlie we heard evidence for and against the cashless debit card. Uh, and thankfully, that evidence came from First Australians, uh, not people who are never going to have uh, the card imposed upon them, but from people who would be, if this uh, legislation is passed, uh, would have the cashless debit card imposed upon them. Uh, and they were conflicted about it. So I think there is, into the future, options for people who want to volunteer, want to opt in to be able to do so. And I certainly wouldn't stand in their way. But this is not what's being presented uh, with this legislation. It is a catch-all um, process and uh, it, it robs people of dignity and respect in the ability to make decisions about their own lives. My key factor, I guess, in attending the, um, the inquiry we had into the cashless debit card was to try and convince myself that there had been real consultation because if there was real consulta consultation and individuals and community representatives were saying to us very clearly uh, this is the response we want and, uh, and a federal government and, an, and indeed an opposition stood in their way, well, we deserve to be condemned. But what the Kalgoorlie hearing 
uh, bore out very, very clearly was that there had not been consultation with people who would be affected by the card. And no amount of glossing up um, the inquiry and no amount, even, even for those most passionate supporters of the Cassius debit card, you could not claim that there had been consultation, unless you think that consultation uh, stops at a particular rung of society and doesn't continue on. Um, we had all of the councils come and give us evidence uh, about why they wanted the cashless debit card. Now, what was interesting about that is, in my view, the federal government has used those councils a bit of a patsy. Now, I can't comment on what councils do in other states and territories, but what I can make comment on uh, in a generalised way is what councils provide in Western Australia, and it's not social services. It is not social services. Councils in WA have had the traditional role of um, doing roads and big infrastructure, uh, water in some remote communities and so on, but not the delivery of social services. But who did the government consult with in Kalgoorlie? Well, it seems to me they largely consulted with the local councils or across the goldfields regions, councils who are not delivering social services and councils who, if this card is imposed on the goldfields community, will have nothing to do with the implementation of the card. So that would surely be the first alarm bell that must ring. Uh, why consult with a group of elected representatives who actually won't have anything to do with the delivery of the card. So I thought, well, maybe the councils then went about consulting with residents, consulting with people who would be affected by the card. And so my questioning focused very much on what councils had done beyond sitting in a room and hearing from government bureaucrats and ministers about the so-called benefits of the debit card. So we heard evidence from the mayor of Kalgoorlie, Mr John Bowler, and he told us, and this is on the transcript for everyone to see, it's public information, that no community consultation, uh, there was no community consultation in Kalgoorlie before the council decided to support the card. None. Uh, when I questioned him on that, um, he told the committee that he'd heard Geraldton hadn't agreed to it. So he wrote to the minister at the time, Mr Tudge, and uh, the local member, Mr Wilson, and told them he wanted the city to be the next trial. So this was the mayor of uh, Kalgoorlie operating in a completely independent way, uh, on a bit of a whim, if you like, um, to ask for the card to come to Kalgoorlie. And actually, when I asked the councils what level of consultation they had done, some of them were quite insulted and felt that they, as elected representatives, had the right, without speaking to the local residents, to make that decision on behalf of residents, which of course they do not. And I put to them that if uh, myself as an elected member did that, that I'd find myself pretty soon voted out of office. Because as elected representatives, we have an obligation. We have an obligation to consult. And yet none of those councils could show us any level of consultation with residents who would be affected uh, by this card. And I found that completely appalling, that they were prepared to front up to a Senate inquiry and tell us why they wanted the card, but had actually not consulted with anyone. Now, I'm not going to gloss over the issues in the goldfield. There are certainly issues in the goldfields. I started my con con uh, contribution today talking about the inherent racism in Kalgoorlie, the sad and shocking death of young Elijah last year. There are issues uh, in the goldfields, as there are across many regions in Western Australia and indeed Australia. But the cashless debit card is not the solution to those issues. We had the Aboriginal Health Council of WA. Now you would think Maybe the federal government might have consulted with them, uh, as they are an Aboriginal Health Council, but they didn't. Um, and uh, certainly, they told us in evidence that um, uh, 
they, what they saw in Kalgoorlie was the continuing harm and trauma that exists today. Uh, that the approach has comprehensively failed. So the approach government has used to date has failed, and it must stop if we're serious about improving outcomes in the community. And those sorts of comments were echoed last week when we heard the close the gap. 10-year uh, report from people like June Oscar and Rod Little and others. Um, so the card, uh, Ms. Co Nelson Cox went on to say the card has been designed by non-Aboriginal people despite being introduced in regions with high Aboriginal populations. We heard um, from uh, Lyndon Brownlee, who since the CDC inquiry in Kalgoorlie has been elected to the council. Um, and um, He said that there's a feeling that we're being pushed back into what was described as the ration days after coming through the policies of self-determination and being able to take control of our own destiny and be able to shape and mould our own future. There is a perception out there that we're going backwards. And remember, I stated earlier that uh, the Prime Minister, in his response to close the gap today, has talked about the need for um, uh, equal representation in our society, equal participation. Well, it isn't going to come uh, through the use of this, um, this card. We heard from Save the Children in Kununurra, who talked about their programs and why they worked. Um, in Kununurra. Now, you know, I'm a great advocate of Save the Children. I see the work they do in Western Australia, and particularly in Kununurra. And we heard that they, through the programs that they put in place, which are put in place, um, talking and discussing and listening to what elders want, and wherever, and, and they are led by First Australians, and that's where they're seeing some difference. They told us that um, kids are going hungry now in Kununurra. And that's an effect of both the CDC and the CDP on those populations. We heard that from police as well. So it is not, um, it's not the sort of response that, that should be going on. Um, last week we heard from the most amazing uh, young woman, um, Bannock Ryan, who's a proud Yamaji. Buddy Meyer woman, a young 20-year-old uh, training to be a registered nurse. And she implored the Prime Minister to sit down and yarn with us. And she asked us, why is it that uh, two-year-olds in her community are walking around with hearing aids? And I think, for me, I want to be able to answer that question. And certainly um, that is not because of the ability to be able to equally participate uh, in our society. It is about ongoing trauma and uh, health issues which remain Unaddressed. But she also put a positive spin. She's from uh, the Geraldton area. For those people not familiar with, um, with Yamaji country, it is Geraldton. And she talked about the Grams Medical Service. Now, most West Australians uh, with any kind of social conscience uh, would know that Grams, as a medical service, an Aboriginal controlled and led medical service, do amazing work. Do amazing work. And that was what Miss Ryan was said was needed. Not a cashless debit card, and they're my words, not hers. But certainly, she was talking about a comprehensive process, uh, a process that involved consultation, a process that involves putting First Nations people's views first. Uh, last week, or the, the week before we came back to Parliament, I was fortunate enough to attend a cashless debit card conference that the University of Melbourne sponsored, and there were two participants there: a woman from Sejuna and a woman from uh, the uh, Kununurra region in Western Australia. And they talked about how the card has changed their lives, not for the better. Not for the better. Uh, in fact, their lives have become much worse. And both those women, neither of them drink, they don't gamble. Um, one of them has worked most of her life and has now got a period of unemployment. Um, they talked about the card not working. They talked about not being able to buy second-hand goods anymore. They talked about not having a lot of cash in their pocket, and they talked about the detrimental effects of that card on their families. Uh, and those women, ordinary women, but advocating very strongly that the cashless debit card was not making this uh, so-called positive difference 
in their <laughs> communities. So it's certainly not the response in the goldfields. There are issues in the goldfields. They need an across-the-board response, but mostly they need to be led by First Nations people. And uh, that's why Labor won't be supporting this legislation.